Hello, I'm Harry Whitehead and I'm Director of the Centre for New Writing and I'm the Principal Investigator on the research project titled Creative Climates, Creatively Communicating the Environmental Emergency. The project seeks to investigate how the arts can better participate in communicating the environmental emergency to diverse audiences to help those audiences towards greater pro-environmental behaviour. And what we're trying to do with the project is to bring together local climate and environmental researchers with local artists and art organisations to commission new art and to seek audience responses to that new art. Um, we're, I'm delighted that the university's um, Leicester Institute for Advanced Studies gave us some seed funds to get up and running and I'm more than delighted that um, the, the Leicester-based professional artist Lucy Stevens um, has very kindly um, undertaken our first arts commission. So welcome Lucy. Thank you Harry. Um, and here's the fantastic piece of art that um, she has created. So perhaps um, first you could just tell us the title of the piece of art and, and a little bit about it. Um... Of course. Yeah, so the title is Air Pollution Exposure and then in brackets Morning Commute. Quite a long title but I think it says everything it needs to say. So uh, this is a piece uh, created using acrylic paint oil pastel, graphite pencil and uh, painted paper which is collaged onto it. So you've got quite a lot of different mediums in one piece there. Um, so what's interesting about this work is that it actually visualises data from a report about uh, commuters travelling to work. So it's looking at people that drive, people that cycle and people that walk and it's visualising how much pollution they're inhaling and the starting point was to uh, run the data, the numbers uh, through Excel to create an area chart and then from that I've developed this almost landscape composition here and you can kind of see that it's colour coded so you've got um, the brown which is drivers who tend to take in more pollution cyclists and then you've got people that walk to work who obviously take in the least pollution and then you've got uh, these to represent people leaving home going to work and then you've got the morning commute which is monday to friday so you've got five lines in there to represent that and then you've got some additional information down here as well they're coming to get us no they're not <laughs> <laughs> So, do you believe that art is about communication? Definitely. I mean, my artwork is normally based on nature conservation. That's kind of what I'm interested in. And I create artworks which showcase pollution, um, habitat destruction, <clears throat> um, you know, sound and light pollution, that type of thing. So, for me, it's about starting a conversation. It's not about um, trying to exclude people or make people feel stupid if they don't understand something. It's about taking maybe complex, dense information, sometimes stuff that's not actually available to the public because it can be academic journals and you need a, a password to kind of get in. It's about reading through that, asking lots of questions, collaborating with people like yourself, and then interpreting it in a way which is vibrant and easy to understand. I think if I understand something, then I can explain that to anyone. I can, you know, make it make sense to anyone. And that's what I try to do as an artist. Mm. And, and how did you find the process of, I mean, this is precisely what you've done here. You, you've taken an academic science paper about air pollution and translated into a piece of art. Did you find that? difficult or did you find it inspiring because of its boundaries and limitations or what? Mm, that's a good question. I do like to have boundaries and limitations and for me that tends to be the, the type of shapes and colours that I use. But for me, I read through the whole report but the thing that I've pulled out is the actual numbers so that's where I can 
actually, you know, run them through and create a graph, but also, you know, learning about the different pollutants, you know, um, kind of, you know, ground level, ozone, particulate matter, googling them, what are they, nitrogen dioxide, you know, what do they look like, what's their chemical compound, you know, what colour would a certain pollutant be, so it's, for me, it's, it is, it is a challenge, but once I've, you know, focused and I've got that in my head, what I'll do is I'll, I'll sketch um, different versions of this. So I would have probably sketched about 30 different versions of this thinking, mm. you know, how can I lay it out? How's the composition gonna work? How can I get as much information there as possible, but with it still being a pleasing composition? Because at the end of the day, it is a piece of artwork as well as being embedded with all of this data and information. It needs to, it needs to look good as well. So you need to, get the shapes right, they need to work well together, the colours need to complement each other. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a different process to how I do other things in the studio, but yeah, I do tend to look at nature conservation reports and I've tried to do similar things in the past, but, but yeah, this is quite nice that it has almost three different types of data within mm. it without feeling crowded as well. Mm. So yeah, I'm yeah. quite pleased with this one. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. It's a fantastic piece of work and um, we look forward to it traveling around the university and maybe more widely for as many people as possible to see it. Thank you very much, Lucy. Thank you.